Hey everyone, Bruce Muffs and LCSW coming to you from Sunridge of Nevada with another breakdown of Mac Miller's last album, Swimming. Um, I'm now going to doing, be doing song nine and it's called Conversation Part One. Here we go. To me, Mac is talking to himself about himself. That's how I'm picking up on this from right away. And again, as I said from the first two we did to today, actually, he everything that he's doing, he's being very, very, very literal. And when he's saying conversation part one, he's literally having a conversation about himself, seeing himself and how he relates to those around him. So it's very, very apt that he picked this, t- this word to use. Now, he goes like this. I'm feeling good and they hate it. Blank, I don't recognize these faces. He says that same stanza twice more in the song. One aspect of depression is being um, angry and irritable. And what I'm gathering from him and what he's trying to say is, I finally made it, you know, kid from Pittsburgh. But I like myself. But who are all these people that I don't know? And I don't recognize anybody. I don't recognize these faces. There's no one here that's from my inner circle that I grew up with, that I'm relating to. Are they really my friends? You know, are they just really literally strangers? So it's not just, you know, Mac feeling this way, but who can you rely on in your own life? You can truly rely upon them. And, you know, he's saying like this. He threw another line in there. Um, started in the basement, made it all the way above the top. Now I'm in the spaceship. Now I'm above it. I'm above it all. Yeah, look where I started. Look where I am now. I started doing this, and now I'm, I'm multi. I'm famous. I'm everything. You know, and what happens is, is that, you know, this makes you get angry. And what happens is, often we lash out at those that are really there, there for us. That's why if you think about it, why my profession and I deal with so many people who are single moms. Because only a mom is going to take the abuse that a kid's going to give out when everything goes straight to pot, everything's going south. Those single moms, they're going to be there through thick and thin. They pay a price for it, of course. They get obese, they get diabetes, they get strokes, they get heart attacks, they get hypertension, they turn to drugs and alcohol, they overeat. They make terrible choices in relationships. But when you're dealing with depression, you don't realize what your mom is going through. And you don't appreciate what she's doing for you. Not just moms. It could be other people as well. But you get the gist. You get the perspective. But we lash out at those we should really be embracing. A lot of my times when I make home visits, I spend so much time trying to prop up the mother to the kids. Because the kids are using the mom as a punching bag, metaphorically. You know, like, you know... I'm unhappy with my life, so I'm going to make your life unhappy. And I try and say to him, you know, if your mom should pass away tomorrow, you guys are in a world of hurt. You guys are not going to be protected. There will be new people coming into the house making decisions for you that I know you're not going to like. You know, your dad's not around where he's kind of vacant, where he's kind of a zombie and absent. Your mom is your rock. Don't treat your rock with disrespect. And I spend a lot of my time doing that, just giving affirmation to these poor moms who are such wonderful people that are there truly for their kids. But when you're in that depressive state, you're not seeing it like that. And it's a punching bag because, you know, everyone else is going to run from you, but moms are going to stay there forever. Okay, I get that. Then on the next few lyrics, he does two lines that are really positive affirmation lines. It goes, you're you missing every single shot that you ain't taken. And then he goes, my head up in the clouds, but my feet beyond the pavement. Yeah. All right. The, the true author of that comment was Wayne Gretzky, who played in the National Hockey League. He's probably one of the greatest players of all time, probably in the top five. And what he said was the line he used is that you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. I'm sorry, you miss, 100%, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That came from Wayne Gretzky. And, and Mac, you know, Mac Miller improvised a little bit. The other thing he said was, my head, be, uh, up, my head up in the clouds, but my feet be on the pavement, yeah. There really is no author for that particular line. I looked it up, I Googled it. There's a million different references where it comes from. But the concept is that my head 
my head is up in the clouds. Those are your goals, your ideas, and your dreams. And the feet, meaning on the ground, is that you're referencing that you're grounded in reality, uh, you're talking practical, taking practical action, and you're keeping things real, keeping things real. So it's the yin and the yang, so to speak. I once, had, I think I told a story before, but a million years ago, I was a student uh, living in Israel, and I, there was some guys wanted to go to a city with Jewish mysticism, meet these famous rabbis who I thought were going to take advantage of them. And when this rabbi heard where they were going, there was these two guys. He said, Bruce, do me a favor. Go with these two guys to the city today when they go on the trip. I said, well, you know, I wasn't really planning to go, rabbi. Why do you need me? He goes, look, Bruce, their heads are in the clouds, but your feet are on the ground. I know you'll look out for them. And I went out with them that day, and I thank God I did because one guy was going to be taken for like $100 back then on something very, very sketchy and dubious I didn't get him into. Fine. But that's the idea. There's a positive self-affirmation. And that's what Mac is kind of giving it to himself, these positive self-affirmation comments. And then it goes like this. Um, my point is, with depression, what often happens is that the very people you should be close to, your family and your real friends, they get pushed aside for friends, quote, quote, that are only there for you on the way up. But when you get to the top of that roller coaster and you start going down, watch how they scatter and vanish and they're not around anymore. We're more connected on, you know, on, on a clinical you know, perspective. We're more connected than ever before <clears throat> with terms of social media and gadgets and our phones and things change every year to be even more connected through everything. You know, Fitbit, you know, t you can literally wear yourself online. But in survey after survey, loneliness is at an all-time high for kids and for adults. We don't connect. We don't have real friends. I said this before, and I do this with like a lot of different groups. I always go like this. Tell me how many true friends you really have. And 99% of the time, I get this. I get one hand, and it's not even a full hand. Who are your true friends that will really be there for you? You want to have friendships that last, that go across generations? Here's a technique to think about. Be real with your real friends. Because real friends are real with you. There's no fluff. There's no icing. You just get right to the meal. Oh, I, don't need to, I don't need to pretend with Rob or with Bruce or with Dave or with Sam or with Dewan or with DeAndre. We're real. If I'm doing well, we're talking about me doing well. And if I'm doing bad, then I'm doing bad. What's the pretending for? If you're really your friend, if they're really your friend, they'll understand that. And if they can't, then they're not your friend. And this goes for white, black, brown, yellow. Even the aliens we've captured that are in Area 51, they all say the same thing when I've done some work with the military and talking to them about friendships from the planets they came from. Couldn't stand the guy back on Jupiter. A complete idiot. Liar. Talks about me behind my back. Well, I have three backs because I'm an, an alien. But you get the idea. I don't really have a back. But you get the idea, Bruce. And I, when I've broken this down... For the Air Force, they're always like stunned. They're always expecting to hear ET, you know. And when I tell them, they're like everybody else, not any kind of higher consciousness. Everyone's always like so depressed, like, oh God, Bruce again. But that's the truth. If you're real with your friends, they'll be real with you. If you're fake, if you don't tell the truth, if you hide things, why would they share with you? I've been astonished in my lifetime as a clinical social worker, even as a, as a man, how people have said things to me and they say, you know what, I feel I can talk to you or I, I, I consider you to be a close friend of mine where I'm sharing this with you. It's a compliment and I don't take that compliment lightly. And I try and give back to people that are my quote, quote, real friends and be honest with them because otherwise, what's a friendship? A friendship that's not real is like holding grains of sand in your hand and expecting it to be able to hold on to it for more than a few minutes. You can't because it's not real. It's like grains of sand that just blow away. 
And that's what I want you to think about for those of you that are dealing with depression and loneliness and, you know, only relating through social media is put them down. They have a great function. We're not arguing. I'm not anti-Facebook. I'm not anti-Twitter. We're YouTube, whatever. But be real with people. Because by being real with people, you're being real with yourself. And that's how you combat issues with depression. It's also the style that I use in my own therapy. I am straight up the middle, hey, diddle, diddle. I don't pretend. What's the point? You're a good kid. You're a great father. You're a wonderful mother. If I'm lying, why, I, I can't even say it with a straight face. It is what it is. You want to get better? Look in the mirror and face yourself. I'll be behind you, helping you, but face the truth. You know, and I don't, again, I'm not even going to pretend I knew Mac Miller. I don't know. I didn't know him. We weren't tight. We weren't, you know, weren't on speed dial. But I just always wonder when, when, when people pass away the way they do, being so unhappy, did he really have, I hope, I hope I'm wrong, did he have a real core of friends that really were there for him through thick and thin? I hope he did. Because, but I'm saying that for you guys. You want to have friends. You want to have them to last. Be real. That'll help you with your depression, anxiety, social anxiety, and you will grow and it'll enrich your life. Thanks for watching once again. Bruce Wolfson, Sunridge of Nevada. I'm out of here.